Welcome to the Courage Barbell Unlimited Podcast with your host, legendary powerlifter and strength athlete, Chad Ikes. For most, the journey of strength starts in the gym, but should inevitably expand through all aspects of life. Join us as we discuss all things strength. Now, here's your host, Chad Ikes. And Amber Hansen. Today, <laughs> we're back with the episode of The Quotes. And, of course, with Amber Hansen. Hi. And today I got an interesting quote. It's from an artist. It just said Banksy. I have no idea who Banksy is, but <laughs> luckily Amber does. So. I do. I don't. So I'm not well versed on Banksy, but um, there's actually a really cool documentary. It might be on HBO Max or something on him. I can't remember. But Banksy is a graffiti artist. And he's very famous. A lot of whatever he graffitis will show up in the newspaper. He will do it totally anonymously in the dark overnight or something. And it'll just show up and it'll become like an art piece, a museum piece. And typically there's some sort of like political undertone or something like that. So he's an artist um, that bases... Like part of his allure is his anonymity. So I don't think anyone still knows who he is. So there was kind of like that air of mystery about Banksy. I mean, Banksy could be a woman. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> I, I'm sure someone knows who Banksy is, but it's cool because it's the, I don't know. It's just like a very creative way of getting artwork out there and like messaging out there and, became very popular it turned into like like a spectacle almost like oh my god a new Banksy piece of artwork popped up somewhere so if you google Banksy you'll get to see some of the artwork and and see a little bit about what what they're about yeah that's kind of cool I like I like that knowledge about him because I really like the quote too yeah. so the quote is if you get tired learn to rest not to quit. And I think this is really cool because I, my blue collar Midwest background of taking this huge pride in how much shit and pain you can take and working your ass off, working your fingers to the bone, like just nonstop. Like I can, no matter what comes at me, I'm going to deal with it and keep moving forward. And, and this whole concept where I think that that can be great and can instill a lot of values and there's a lot of good that goes with it. There's also, it can go too far into some serious negativity. And like sometimes people will push so hard and get so far that they just quit. Mm -hmm. And there's this balance point in there. And it go kind of goes along with the Instagram post I did uh, a few days ago about loving what you do. And, you know, even if you love what you do, there's going to be bad times. There's going to be hard times. There's times where you just got to have discipline. You just got to do the work. But sometimes if that love is fading, maybe it's because you just need to rest, man. You just need mm -hmm. to step back and find that love and that passion again and then get back to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've dealt with burnout a lot. And most of it has been through my career, um, which I do love and I enjoy. And getting tired, like I've never, I can't just quit the military. That's not a thing. But <laughs> um, there's been times where I'm just like, I don't want to do this. I'm freaking tired. I'm so sick of dealing with all of this bullshit, blah, blah, blah. It seems so silly. But then... I'll like either take a step back or I'll take some of my time off and just recalibrate and rest and not deal with it and unplug. And then I'll come back with like feeling reinvigorated or not as beat down and not as fatalist as I was before because I took that rest and I took that time to myself and recovered. 
I think I think this goes to like in we're in a relationship, so I think about relationships a lot. What? We what? are? We are. You didn't know it yet. <laughs> You're going to get a letter. It's You uh-huh. got. You just got to sign it. That's all. Cool. Um, <laughs> I think in relationships, this works too, especially mm-hmm. like growing up in that Midwest family. My, my mom and dad both worked. They had a lot of stress raising three kids and just trying to make a living. And, you know, there was times growing up where it's like you could just see all the pressure of my brother's shit and just the the finances and everything and everybody's working so hard that you just just all the stress and it's like Mm -hmm. sometimes it's like you need to go listen we need we're arguing a lot we're bickering a lot we're kind of at each other's throats it's not that the love's gone it's that dude there's just so much shit Mm -hmm. like you just need to take that rest either a little bit apart or even take that rest together and, and go back to like, Hey, who, who are we without all this freaking stress? Mm -hmm. And can we find those feelings and then come back at it smarter where if you have that anxiety and you just keep beating on it over and over and over. And even in one of the things in communication that I learned was sometimes you need to just go, Hey, let's just put this on hold for a minute. Let's each go for a walk Mm-hmm. step away from this calm down and come back and and it's the same thing with training like when you're training for like powerlifting or really any sport and say you, you're you're kind of borderline overtrained you're just pushing really hard then you get an injury then you get another injury and you're just like fuck mm-hmm. like this sucks man like you, everything you're just dealing with all this shit all the time And it can make you want to quit. It can make you go, this sucks. Like this sport sucks. Screw this. When really all you need to do is go, wait a minute. I need to step back, get this injury healed, and then see where I'm at. And I guarantee most of the time you're going to come back and you're going to to find that love of that sport and that motivation. If you're going to use motivation, I, I don't know that I like that term, but. You know, you're going to come back to a better situation. You're going to feel better about it. You're going to start making gains again. And you're going to go, oh, yeah, this is why I love this sport. This is why I do this sport. Mm-hmm. Yeah, basically, like figuring out a way to remind yourself of your own why. Because sometimes that gets lost. It get, gets lost in just the daily grind, all of the other shit that starts piling up on stuff. I know I've done this a handful of times with powerlifting and it hasn't been because of training. It's been because of like powerlifting politics, which is another thing that I think will drive people out of the sport and will stop them from even starting it. Like all of the terrible shit with USPA and there's bad people in every organization and every sport and all of that stuff. And like, I would find myself fixating on those things or fixating on basically like the, the interpersonal like politics or the Federation drama or all of that shit, or, you know, people coming to me and being like, well, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? Why don't you do that meat? Why don't you like that meat director? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, fuck it. I just want to lift weights. And as soon as I bring myself back to, this is fun. I like doing this. I like my friend group. I like training. I like training at elite at the dirty gym. Once I bring myself back to there, that's when I'm like, okay, I'm not quitting. I'm tired of the Federation bullshit. I'm totally tired of that. And I hate it. And it sucks. But if I want to keep competing, I have to figure out a way to either push that aside or figure out a way to get involved and make it better, which I do by judge, like being a judge myself, putting on a polo, um, helping out different federations with like, okay, here's how gear works. If it's a traditionally raw federation and they want to get into that or helping meet directors, helping raise money for prize pots, blah, 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 blah. I like that. I really like the idea of, and I probably forget about this, the idea of why, why are you doing it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, why? And kind of getting back, like getting back to your roots of why you did it and mm-hmm. what you loved about it. Cause it, I mean, I imagine in any sport, there's going to be that grind. There's going to be that shit. Mm-hmm. There's going to be plateaus. Those politics. There's going to be plateaus. 
And so I kind of look at, I look at this kind of stuff as training and part of training. I get so frustrated that people get in powerlifting. I get so frustrated that people get so wrapped up in the gym Mm -hmm. and they don't think too much about all the other stuff that goes into it to become truly successful at it. Mm -hmm. And I think one of those things is, is learning that rest is important Mm -hmm. that we need to recover and recovery is every bit as important as how hard you're going to train. And those two things have to equal each other. Yes. But along with that resting portion is like, why do I do this? Almost Mm -hmm. like if you write your program out every six weeks, that question in huge big letters should be printed across your program. Take a a little bit of time and remind myself, why do I do this? Why do I love this? Even to the point of how am I doing? Because I think a lot of people are actually making gains and they don't realize it because of the daily grind. Can't see the forest for the trees. Yes. <laughs> and so I think maybe that's that could be a portion of training I've never even thought of as training. But I think that's – I think I've always kind of – some things I do naturally myself. But for other people, it would be good to add in the training too. And even me, mm-hmm. it would be good for me to remind myself of it every now and then. I mean, I think I naturally do, but maybe have it. This is part of it. Why do you do it? Why do I power lift? Yeah. Because I love it. What do you love about it? I love the release of endorphins. Mm -hmm. I love pushing myself. I love the fact that I can live a better life because of it. Mm -hmm. That I know I'm healthier than most. I can do more than most. Mm-hmm. My age doesn't have to be this huge factor in my life because mm-hmm. I'm going to stay healthy and I'm going to stay active. And I just literally like lifting weights. Yeah. I try to, I tell a lot of people, well, not a lot of people, but every time someone kind of gets in this funk or whatever, and I, I bring them back to the why, I bring my cadets back to the why a lot as well because they have a hard time deviating from it. But I'm like, if, cause social media is a huge part of powerlifting now, like it or yes. not. I'm like, if Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, all of it disappeared tomorrow, would you still lift weights? And some people like they'll, they'll come off really defensive at first and be like, yeah, of course. And then I'm like, would you really, what do you, do you get more from the validation of social media than you do from actually lifting? See, I, I, I didn't know if you were actually asking me those questions. No, I know that you don't. <laughs> you don't give a shit. Because I was going to go, I don't <laughs> post even like an media. eighth of what I actually do in the gym. Yeah, you you were under a barbell before. Social like media, I have a hard so. time. Like if I don't have, there's a lot throughout my day. I'm like, oh, I got 20 minutes before my next client. So like I have to do it in 20 minutes. Yeah, well, but, I'll call you randomly and I'll be like, what do you, oh, you're training. You're like, yeah, I got to get this in. I'm like, oh shit, I'll let you go. And you're like, no, it's fine. And then you just start training. I'll, I will literally be talking to you on the phone while I'm lifting. Yeah. I'm like, dude, I don't, I don't count reps anymore anyway. I can talk plenty. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm all about the feel. Yeah. But there's times where I don't have necessarily stuff to do or stuff that I can move. And I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm going to, I'll do this for 20 minutes and then I'll, you know, I get a quick 20 minute session in or I'm like, okay, I have, I'll do I'll train for an hour tonight. Yeah. Like, I literally have to, to, to watch the clock. Yeah. Cause I'll spend hours and I know yeah. that training for hours is stupid. Like anything after yeah. an hour and 15 hour and a half is a waste of time. I just like doing it. Yeah. It's like, fun. I like how it feels. I like pumping mm-hmm. my muscles up. I like the feeling of that. Yeah. You know, I like going, Hey, I've done this before. How much can I do today? Yeah. Or can I get a little bit better range of motion or can I improve this piece of my technique yeah, but, in this short period of time? But I literally just like lifting. I mean, I can't even explain it. Like how the hell could you just like lifting weights? I, I don't know. I just do. Yeah, like I, I just know. do. I just like it. Yeah. And I mean, sometimes it's that simple. Hey, Chad, like, you need to buy a new couch. I'm like, I don't want to spend money on that. Yeah. Hey, 
there's this new attachment for my rack. Yeah, there's this new monolith <laughs> right? attachment. There's a new bar. With, like, how uh, many bars do you need? Duct tape and PVC pipe. Uh -huh. That's <laughs> custom, though. That's, that's yeah. I don't even know if you could buy that. Yeah, don't sell that. You better patent it. But I think I think we need to. I think it's a. I think it's an outlook. Mm -hmm. And. It's not all about the work. It's about the balance. And you can't, you know, if I take a piece of metal and I just keep bending it and bending it and bending it and bending it, eventually it's going to break. Mm -hmm. At some point, you need to try to retemper it or you need to, to look back and go, this isn't the material we need for this or that. Mm -hmm. I mean, a human being will break just like everyone else. Everybody, I think I'm a badass. Everybody has their breaking point, though. I have a breaking point. And a lot of times, if you if the body will heal itself, the mind mm -hmm. will heal itself. Sometimes it needs a break. It needs a chance to heal itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that you know, comes back to the quote of knowing when you're tired versus when you need like a break versus quitting. Like sometimes your body will tell you and you will not have a choice that you need to take a break. And a lot of people, I don't, God, I do not hope anyone gets injured, but a lot of people who I know who have gotten injured have learned so much in patience and recovery and in the slow crawl back to where they were well, the, just the, from taking time off because they were forced to, they couldn't do anything else. The funny, or getting creative on training, like SSB stuff or bench only. Yeah, what can I do to continue my progress while I'm resting mm -hmm. that injury? Yeah. But I can go back to my career and look at all of my major injuries. There was little minor injuries that I didn't pay attention to. Uh -huh. And a lot of the top lifters that I've talked to feel the same way. They're like, oh, yeah, I, I, my body was telling me before it really went apeshit. Uh -huh. I just wasn't going to listen. Yeah. Why do you think I didn't do that band shirt meet when I found out I had stress fractures in my forearms? Mm -hmm. That's my body telling me, hey, you're on the road to Snap City, bitch. A lot of people <laughs> that would have went, oh, I can get one more in. Mm-mm know when to call it mm -hmm. i didn't quit i'm gonna do a, a band shirt meet absolutely i'm gonna have that record again for sure but it's not time and that all goes back to that quote mm -hmm. which is funny because the guy who said the quote is like an artist mm -hmm. so maybe he trains i don't know i don't know either but my That'd guess cool. my guess is is that he's this is related to to either business or art and I mean I'm sure Mike even skate. even as a painter if you if you're painting enough and especially if you're selling paintings and you're trying to make a living and you're it could turn into a grind where you're like why the hell am I even doing this yeah you have all this yeah. stuff that doesn't hit and doesn't hit and then you have like one big thing or a breakthrough I mean shit this podcast like you're still doing it. You still love it. You have awesome guests, awesome subject matter. Like, you're not going to quit it just because you have to take some time off, which is, we talked about that in an earlier podcast yeah. of, I needed to take some time. I needed to recalibrate. That doesn't mean it's, it's getting quit. I'm going to come back to it when I have the bandwidth to do that. But that's the, but that's the point. The point is, is that, you stop before you get to the point of quit and you rest. Mm -hmm. Got some howling dogs in the I'm background. sorry if you guys, if anyone heard that, Bigum is dead asleep and he was just howling in his sleep. And I'm dying laughing about it. He's chasing some rabbits. Yeah, he's getting it. He ain't quitting. <laughs> he's tired though, that's why he's sleeping. <laughs> he's resting so he doesn't get burned out. Exactly. <laughs> He's, a, he's got a rough it. life. That that's one. his why. <laughs> Snacks are his why. Yeah, so that's an interesting quote. I mean, you know, like yeah, I like it. You could be an artist and get big, and you start making a living, and you start taking on more jobs <clears throat> and more jobs and more jobs until you're behind, and now you're trying to keep up, and 
Yeah, mm-hmm. it's just taking that time to go, listen, I need to I need to back off and rest and I need to keep that balance where I'm never that far away from getting back to my why and mm-hmm. realizing it and knowing it and being able to feel it. Mm-hmm. Do you think sometimes you just need to quit things? Taking an alternate look at this quote. Yeah. I don't know about quit, pull back, maybe. Mm. I mean, I don't think, I mean, everybody takes breaks. Everybody takes vacations. Mm-hmm. And that, that, that's a depends thing. Yeah, I guess it I depends think, I on... think if you keep a kind of even keel or some form of balance, it could be a week off. Like getting stressed out, man. I'm going to, I have, I actually have some friends that, um, have successful businesses and they learn to set their businesses up to where when they do get to that point and they start questioning, why the hell am I doing this? Mm -hmm. They can go travel somewhere for a week to a month nice, and come back. And they're like, man, I'm, I'm rested. I know why I'm doing this. I'm ready to go. Mm -hmm. Like, and they're focused. And, And now when they are working, they're way more productive. Yeah. So I think it's that balance and I think it's like, it's not quitting. It's not taking time off. It's just a little step back. Recalibrating. Yeah. It's a good quote. Good choice. It's a very good quote. I like it. Nice, Banksy. All right, guys. Until next time, we're out of here again. Bye. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Courage Barbell Unlimited Podcast. For more information, please visit couragebarbell.com. Until next time.